the Rock With You intro. Right. Most iconic drum intro, drum fill ever in such a small amount of time. How did you write that fill? Oh, my God. So we were cutting for the Off The Wall album, uh, the song Rock With You. But um, I was very fortunate to be the mainstay drummer through the entire record. So Quincy would cast different rhythm section guys and put them around me. So I was very fortunate to play on every song. Amazing. And uh, got to play with different bass players, you know, like Lewis Johnson um, and uh, Greg Finlegain's playing synth bass on Don't Stop. But um, it started by, after I cut a couple of songs, and then they asked me to come back and do uh, do the rest of the record on Monday. And I that basically was party weekend central before that. <laughs> got, got to the studio, boom, boom, boom. We did Don't Stop. And then I get asked, uh, okay, so what's your schedule like coming up? And uh, we want to get your band in and record this song. And I knew, Quincy knew, that it was a hit record written by Rod Temperton. And the song happened to be called Rock With You. And we did not know it at the time. but So we were all cast. It was Hawk Walensky on keys, Bobby Watson on bass, and David Williams on guitar. And we were in um, Westlake B., which uh, ironically is where I cut Gaga. Wow. They, they wanted the exact same vibe, but X amount of decades later. But <laughs> So we go in, we start listening to Rod's demo, and Rod's very precise and simplistic and has everybody playing a specific part. Now, the drum part, no. There was no drum part. It was just motion. But like the bass part Bobby's playing, it was pretty much verbatim. However, Bobby took liberties and played the most melodic bass part of all. Not until the correct take. Mm. So take one. I don't know. I probably kind of, you know, I get, I cut it with a click that I programmed. And back then it was a Yuri old film click. Seven frame film click. Wow. And so I got the tempo, blah, blah, blah. We start rehearsing. And then we go, okay, we're ready to cut. So take one. Eh, no magic. You know, Okay. Well, let's do it again. Okay. Little fill, whatever. Take two. Eh, maybe a little better. People are learning their parts. Time's going on. I'm looking in the control room, and I can see Quincy and Rod in there. Rod's puffing on his red Marlboros. And uh, take three. A lot better. No magic. And we're sitting there kind of in the studio in a small room. And I see Quincy get up and Rod get up and come out of the door and Quincy stands right by me, and I'm going, oh, shit. And Rod's standing right here, smoking his Marlboros with his English accent. And, and Quincy goes, um, JR, he goes, um, if you could come up with a fill, an intro fill that the whole world would forever identify with this <laughs> song, could you do that? And maybe on this next take, and... Uh, I looked at him and I go, sure. <laughs> like like John Belushi, like <laughs> and, and, and all the guys were like going like this to me and like going, Oh fuck. And like No pressure. No pressure. What are you gonna do? And 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 little did they know that they are gonna be put in the exact same amount of pressure because of what's going through my brain. But I didn't know what I was gonna do. So I immediately, I, I reflected back to uh, the Rod demo, which was, it was weird. And then I thought, what do I hate most about drum fills? I hate when the, the let's just take two examples. One is straight 16th notes and triplets or putting them together is just wrong. Yeah. It's wrong. And so I go, I'm, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> But I did it more in a, a syncopated march world. So then, then uh, okay, I got ready to take four, let's go. And all of a sudden, I hear four clicks, and then I have to go. So the four clicks were click, 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 click. And, and I just did that, but I used my military training, my march training, and I added syncopation, and I made sure there was a hole that you could drive an 18-wheeler through to get to the next downbeat. But it all came spontaneously. In that one take. And I was like, thank you, God. In that one take. 
and then we never did another take. No way. That was it. That Phil set the magic for the whole take. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, everybody's playing differently. Bobby's bass line is completely different than the other three takes. Because you hit that downbeat, and everyone was like, ooh. That's what it was. And, and Quincy knew oh. they were up dancing and shit, and it was like, rot in a rot. It was great. It was great. You know, and then blah, 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 blah. So that was... And then we kind of knew we had cut a number one record. Oh. Which is, I have people asking me, and I, you know, I am working on my book now. Yeah. Which would be a 2024 release. But Amazing. I have this, this is being thought about, uh, about how do you know that? How do you think about that? Yeah. So it's like all of us looked at each other and we go, we did it. Wow. That's so much pressure and you did it in one take. It just came out of you. And there was no pressure the minute that... I guess the minute the fill happened, but it was really the downbeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, as a drummer, man, when you land on that downbeat, I mean, there is, that's, that's word. Yeah. I love that that's one take and it wasn't this like perfectly written or articulated thing or it wasn't Quincy walking in being like, can you do something kind of like Stu? No, like, no. I, I mean, on other like, sessions, Quincy's come in with a little piece of music and he's written out some fills for me for other stuff and I'm, you know, and his penmanship was just perfect. Yeah. You know, it was the real deal. For sure. And I go, you really want me to play that? And he goes, yeah, play that. You know, anyway, but not on this one. Oh, my God. So you knew you had a hit. 100%. And is there vocal on that? Is there a demo vocal? Is there a Michael demo vocal when you're cutting those songs? I don't believe there was a vocal on that. That's just, a great question. Just an instrumental. But I know he had been working on it way before I even got on the scene. Right. Uh, through Rod, but it, it's Rod is always he was very precise. Yeah, about all his records, there everybody had a it was like a team, you know. So so on that bad album is Michael? Yeah, is he there with Quincy and Rod and you, or is 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 it like in and out? Yes. Sometimes it's yeah. Like what is what was well, it like? First of all, there's multiple multiple versions of Mike. I can imagine. You know, the beginning Mike, which was Rock With You Days. Yeah. A real pretty man. Yeah. Uh, shy, you know, and then, you know, we get through, uh, you know, the Thriller Days, and then you get to uh, the uh, We Are The World Days, and then you get to Bad. Bad. Things started transforming. But he was, Quincy was allowing him to write more. If you ever notice, there's not Michael Jackson songs on the record off the wall. Mm. There's co-written. Mm. So he started to write more, like bad. Mm -hmm. Quincy was allowing him to grow up. Yeah. and uh, But Mike was there. And I, it was during the heyday of, of when we were all uh, doing our jobs, all the studios at Westlake were, were filled with somebody. So thank God I had the... I had D, the big room for the drums, and a big old ass rack of bullshit <laughs> that I would trigger with a Mac sitting on it. Like, hold, yeah, hold on, let me let me program that. And there's really nothing there. Yeah, you know. But, but Quincy wanted electronics, but Mike was there, and he would offer suggestions. Finally, yeah, you know, which you know, down to the end days of Michael, uh, he would produce from his car. Oh my god! He would like call me. He goes. JR, uh, don't forget to put a fill going into the bridge. I really want a specific fill, and I'll call back after you do it. I go, okay, why don't you just come into the studio? Tell me what to do. Yeah. No, uh, oh, no, no, I know you know what to do. You know. Wow. Anyway. What, what was it like working with Michael Jackson? I'm very blessed. Um, I know that they had been cutting post-Ben with some L.A. players, and but nothing was sticking. Mm. And I think Greg Finnegan's was still a common denominator. Mm. And um, But Quincy wanted something different. Yeah. And uh, that's so this whole convergence happened at, during Off the Wall with Jerry Hay, with Rod Temperton, with um, uh, Gary Grant, Larry Williams, Lewis Johnson, um, Greg Finnegan's, Bobby Watson, this, this, all these other people at Patty Austin, they all converged. It was just kind of a meant to be thing so working with him was great after we had cut off the wall i'm green it was like my i've done records but that was my i mean we had done rufus records but they weren't big like that and i asked quincy can i be a fly in the wall and stick around for the whole process because i didn't know i was just 23 or four years old mm -hmm. and he goes sure so I'm, I'm like sitting back and then i'm watching michael sing and all of a sudden you hear <clears throat> you hear his feet coming through the mic 
And so Bruce Swedeen, just the genius engineer, goes, well, we, I have to fix this uh, somehow. So he built some sort of platform that Michael could still dance while he sang, but you didn't hear it. And so I would sit wow. and, and like a fly in the wall and listen. I'm a Berkeley guy, by the way. Man, I'm smart. I'm a piano player. I know all this harmony. So I'm listening to Michael layer his parts. And I go, well, that's really cool. And then this note's really cool. And then the third note, no, no, this note's a half step off, man. And I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it wrong. And then all of a sudden, Mike takes a break and puts the fourth note on. I go, oh, I'm an idiot. I was wrong. And he had, I was like listening to him layer and, and just the whole concept of, of uh, you know, us drummers, when we, we, you know, we basically lay down, we're building the house from the bottom up. Yeah. With hammers and nails and stucco and, you know, whatever, blocks and mud. And, and then we get to a point and we leave. But we don't ever stay around for the whole record process. Right, right. So I, I, I learned a lot that, you know. First one in, first one out. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, not, Sometimes. <laughs> not Nile Rogers used to fuck with me and say, yeah, you know, the New York against L.A. vibe. Yep. He'd go, yeah, JR just leaves his car running. <laughs> I go, well, that's not true. Be like, I mean, I wrote the Rock With You riff in one take. Yeah. Instantly, and I said, well, why don't you want me to leave? What am I doing here? No. You want me to order lunch? Yeah. You want me to yeah. hang around? No. 